The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS licence nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Introducing Macquarie ETFs. Macquarie's Active ETFs now give you easier access to the global active investment expertise and strategies that were previously only available as traditional unlisted managed funds. Benefit from the transparency and convenience of an ETF structure underpinned by the global investment expertise of Macquarie's fund managers, which offer you additional options for portfolio diversification and the potential for index outperformance. Discover everyday access to active investments with Macquarie. Visit etf.macquarie.com to find out more. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. I've got the pleasure of speaking with longtime friend Baz Gardner uh, from the Social Advisor. Do you call yourself from the Social Advisor these days? Baz, what do you, where do you, where do you uh, say you're from these days? Uh, to, from planet Earth, I guess. No, the Social, <laughs> the social Advisor is fine. That's, that's still, I guess, the name of the, the company I primarily operate through. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks for joining. And you know, yeah, absolutely we're, pleasure. we're recording this on a it's a it's a Wednesday morning, Tuesday morning. You put a post on LinkedIn and said, "Hey, hello world!" I haven't said hi for a little while or something to that effect, and uh, and everyone's jumped on to say, "Where are you being, Baz? What are you up to? What have you been doing?" So I quickly jumped in to invite you along to the podcast because I think a lot of people would love to know what you've been up to for the last few years. So tell us, Baz, where where have you been, and 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 what's the future hold? Well, I'm going to add a bit of stuff to that first because you, you know, you know, I like I like context. Yeah. Um, so, firstly, James, I just want to say, hey, it's been it's been awesome sitting back and you know watching other people kind of lead the advice profession and show different ways of doing things and using their voices to to have an impact. And it's funny because I've I've kind of been sitting on my voice proverbially for the last four years or so, or three and a half years. And, you know, I was obviously doing a lot in the social media space and speaking circuit and whatever. So I'd made the decision to to kind of get back out there and use my voice a bit. And, you know, I'll, I'll share a little bit about my journey and story. But I was thinking to myself, the first thing I thought of was I have to hit James up. Um, and it wasn't yesterday morning, it was yesterday afternoon. So like within, <laughs> I think within an hour and a half, I had an invite to uh, to do the podcast with you today. So I love the synchronicity of that. Yeah. And I'm just going to add before I answer the question, you know, I, I talk about what you're doing. Um, people in the advice space definitely see it. Mm. And, you know, your your voice and it being contrasted with with other people doing certain things and it's kind of interesting because you're used as the, you know, the authentic, what a, what a great bloke. Everyone has good things to say about you, James. Um, <laughs> Thanks, you know, and, and, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people know, but you and I worked together. You did our, you know, personal brand accelerator. Yeah. Um, and you pretty much took everything that I had to teach through that and you put it into practice. Um, and you've done it very authentically. And you're a great bloke and you just let people see that. And I don't know if everyone knows, but you've obviously created very significant outcomes for your business as a consequence. But more importantly, you know, you've a- actually helped inspire, you know, a whole bunch of advisors. And I know because I talk to them. I might, yeah. be, I might be quiet on the public social front, but I've still maintained my network. I still know what everyone's doing and where they're at and, you know that kind of stuff as well. So anyway, I just wanted there's to throw that people, in. And look, there's a bit. I've had a few people on. You know, the guys from Link Wealth. I had a couple of them on the podcast, and I did some work with them. Aaron Kane was on. Uh, spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, your name pops up a bit as much as you know what your face might not have been on LinkedIn or wherever else, but uh, but certainly certainly still around. Yeah. So yeah, what have you been up to for the last few years? Look. Um, you know, it's a whole, I mean, we could literally do, uh, you know, a Joe Rogan style to our podcast just on that one issue. Um, and, you know, at some point I'd be very happy to go, go deep. 
um, yeah. with I don't really have secrets. Um, I'm certainly nobody's, you know, nobody's guru. But for the last four years, um, you know, we were doing an events business. We had online workshops. We had a lot of physical events, as you know. Um, and that took a lot of energy maintaining. Part of what I had was this vision to change what advice looked like. And so I wanted to shake, you know, shake a bit of the foundations of that. You know, I worked for, you know, a lot of the big companies. I worked for FPA and the AFA before they did the the merger. Um, you know, setting the scene of what advice is and that it should be better. It should go deeper, that it's more valuable than advisors know themselves that they leave a lot of value on the table, that technology is a way to not just improve the back end, but to improve the client engagement and relationship end. And part of that, I'm going to have to say, was really very ego-driven. You know, I can change the world through changing advice. Yeah. Um, and so it's a bit of a personal development journey here as well, James. And so we created this business, and I definitely overcapitalized on – you know, the business, the financial decisions, and more than that, my, you know, my personal energy, you know, so using my energy to try and push a group of people along um, wasn't the most effective way to do it. And so I learned some hard lessons in that. Um, Mm. Most of them were about my own ego and my own sense of self-worth. And one of the things I love about advice and why I'm so obsessed by the value of advice and what it can do for our society is that in order to be a better advisor, and you've heard me talk about this in different things that I do, you know, this measure of being a good advisor and then an exceptional advisor, and what's the difference between a good advisor and an exceptional advisor? And the difference is self-awareness, all right? The difference is you, you have to become a better person yourself in order to have more impact with your clients, in order to create more value, more change to own that value. And that's something that I love because I see it in all of the people that I work with and Mm. I've also seen it in myself. So, yeah, it's been a very much a self-awareness journey. I feel like I screwed a bunch of things up. Never in my life had I had imposter syndrome, um, which is kind of weird because I think most people in social media start with imposter syndrome. Absolutely, they do. Yeah. Um, So, I screwed things up and... I didn't really screw them up. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've, you know, I've, I've made a lot of money. I've burned a lot of money. I've never been afraid of, afraid of that. And so, in my own business decisions, I've always taken big risks because I always knew I could just rebuild something. And of course, you yeah. know, I've got some gray hairs in here now. So, experiencing experiencing some of that development has also, as I said, it's been a personal personal awareness journey. So, yeah. if I kind of bring this back from you know, the the broader sense to answering your question. I had, you know, I had a big business. We had three full-time videographers. I had, you know, I was putting out, you know, a video a day, um, usually two or three videos a day, short form, long form. Obviously, social media platforms have changed slightly since then, and you have I touched base and talked about that over the intervening years. Mm. Um, and we're doing events. I was really the same thing I did in my financial planning business that I had for nearly 15 years. I made it so that I was making myself redundant in the advice process. So we're doing the events. I'm training other, you know, trainers, salespeople, you know, deliverers of content. And all of that was really making myself redundant from who I am. And that's I'm an advisor. So that's mm-hmm. the biggest admission, James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I wound all of that business down. I had a sneaking suspicion that we were going to have a pandemic at the end of 2019. I won't get into that because that'll set people on a whole other tangent. <laughs> but I had a pretty strong suspicion that there was a large amount of risk of that. So I shut down the events business. That cost a lot of dollars because I'd invested a lot in it. Um, yeah. And it was producing. Um, and I now have a team of two. Um, and really what I've decided to do on my journey of being a better advisor myself but also figuring out how to make advice businesses better is I've just been working with a handful of clients. And the social media thing, so not only did I want to pull back from that to reassess my, you know, where am I at personally, what I'm doing, um, getting over, you know, my own hangups, 
as I said, the sense of imposter syndrome, which came late, late in my journey. Um, and also I don't need it. Right. Yeah. So for the work that I'm doing now, I have, I have a waiting list, I'm very good at it. I can maintain networks. So I've really had to stop and think, well, why go to social media? Why use my voice? It's not for my ego, right? I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I don't need it for monetary benefit. So why do it? And I've yeah, been sitting enough. on that for a couple of years now. You know, I've had this yeah. conversation a few times. So yeah, no, yeah. And so, yeah, as I said before, there's been a few a few of the guests on the podcast in the last little while that, yeah, they've been they've been working with you and um, and all speak really highly of the the turnaround and transformations in their businesses that you've helped them with over a period of time. And it's and it's not just hey, I'll come in for a month and I'll yeah, do this thing and do that thing and I'll see you later. Pay pay the bill and, I, and I'm out the door. I know yeah. it's it's pretty deep that you're going with them on an extended on an extended kind of program. So yeah, so let me let me kind of explain doing. that bit of what I've been doing. So you know, I grew my advice business. I was doing stuff that other people hadn't have thought of. You know, converting clients to video meetings. You know, in the early 2000s when that was unheard of. You know, using using video recordings for different stuff and experimenting with things. And really, this has just been my obsession. So I don't know if you've seen that. St- I think I've, I've I've used it in some of our workshops. But the the Steve Jobs speech that he did to you know graduating university body. Yes, I can't yeah, remember which one. Yeah, and yep, he's like, yep. you can only connect the dots looking backwards. Well, the dots are pretty simple. I'm driven by helping people be more aware of their own consciousness, to be more of themselves, to be better versions of themselves. And the second part is I'm obsessed with advice and the ability to have an impact on that. And I talk about advice, and to me, advice is a bit of a different definition because I think financial planners get their blinkers on. You know, it's financial Mm -hmm. advice and what that means. And I think that actually impairs their ability to do much more for their clients. They kind of live in a box. Um, And the same thing applies to, you know, accountants and everyone else in the the advice space, even business coaches, et cetera. To me, that's just your your denomination, right? So Hmm. I'm still an advisor. I just don't have a proper authority anymore. Yeah. Um, And I don't focus on those things. I focus on other developmental issues. So my obsession with advice and in particular financial advice businesses to a lesser degree accounting firms. I've just been figuring out ways to practice that. And so I've gone from the group stuff to going very deep with a smaller number of clients. And I've really enjoyed that because I'm back to who I am. I'm an advisor. Yeah. Having interventional conversations is part of who I am and what I do. And I, I've really enjoyed seeing, well, I can achieve this, but what if I can help other people take themselves, their personal awareness, but also their businesses to a new level? Um, and look, I've, probably enjoyed the last you know four years of my of my advice journey the most it's been it's been awesome so what what prompted your your post yesterday afternoon it's obviously the the linkedin algorithm obviously still loves you because it it, as soon as i refreshed it was at the top of my feed and i suspect the half Uh, a dozen people that had already commented i spoke to to five or six people yesterday in the course of my normal day and all of them had seen the post so i thought that was I thought that was interesting. It's interesting, um, isn't it, that you haven't posted yeah. for? Oh, I haven't done anything active for for so yeah. for so long, but you put it up, and it knows those that are gonna gonna want to see it. Eh? Yeah, I thought you that go. was in- interesting myself. LinkedIn's LinkedIn's algorithm is developed um, in interesting ways, um, and I'll, I'll refrain from delving into the nuance of that because I I'm still very analytical. I love you know I, I I use intuitive process, but I always back everything up with the numbers and the data and analytics. So I might just continue just to round out what I'm doing at the moment and then I'll answer the question directly. So basically, I've become a coach consultant. I think those words really don't fit the bill for what I do with my my clients because it's personal development. I look at their business. I look at their pricing. I know most of my clients, clients themselves how they engage them, how they communicate with them, what's their language, what's their tonality, how explicit are they, what's their margin per client, what's the love factor per client, you know, what's the culture within the business, how are they using team members within their business, all of the elements of what makes business great and in an advice framework. And so about 60% of my time is 
directly working with advice firms, but going deep. And that's why on average in the first year, you know, it's above 50% revenue growth in the first year. And on average, it's more than double profitability. And these are businesses that haven't just started. So they've been around for a long time. So having Mm. that kind of impact, I enjoy, right? Yeah, there's personal change, but I'm a nerd too. So I like seeing the numbers, right? (laughs) Um, But there's one element that I didn't ever get over and that's the end client. So I think advisors are my people. They are the people I love working with. I understand their businesses better than they do. I'm not trying to be conceited. I'm just obsessed. Um, and But I miss the end client. So about 40% of my work is working in an advisory capacity for um, family businesses and high net worth individuals. I but- don't have a proper authority, so I don't touch that stuff. And most of those clients come from my financial planning or accounting clients. So it's yeah, the tricky ask, ones. Where does that come from? Yeah, yeah it's the tricky ones that uh, I can't just coach behind the scenes, and so I'll be introduced as a specialist. Um, you know, in the last four or five years, I've you know I've helped negotiate more than fifty business acquisitions. You know, licensing deals that are worth tens of millions of dollars. You know, helped disappear many millions of dollars of capital gains. And when I say disappear, just structure it more tax effectively, so we can use the proper language. Um, mm. So that's what I'm doing. Um, And I'm really, really, really enjoying it. Not trying to change the world. I just work with people I really love. And man, do we do some cool shit together. (laughs) So why go back to social media then? Now I can answer your question. Why why the post yesterday? Uh, Look, to be honest, I'm just not using my voice. I have learned so much about business itself, psychology. I don't watch sport. I don't really watch Netflix. I research, I read, I look at human patterns, and I'm not sharing it. And so I'm I'm not going back, and I don't know exactly what this is going to look like. I don't know what I will do, but I need to use my voice. And I got past all of my own things in the way, and I've found a new motivation. The motivation isn't proving anything. It's not winning something. It's not getting business. It's not filling you know, an audience because that's a business model I've got. Um, It's just I've got stuff to share and I think advice can be better and it should be. So you just see see where it takes you. So you you think you'll you'll keep sharing it more regularly now and it won't be four years in between this one and the next (laughs) one? Uh, Yeah, definitely. I mean, remember, I was was actively sharing for a lot longer than four years. So it's not like Mm. it's not like it was a flash in the pan and then, you know, I took four years off. So I was doing content pretty solidly for, you know, almost a decade. Yeah, um, long before and, anyone else was. Yeah, absolutely. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I'll just be another voice out of, out of you know, millions. Yes. I don't really care who watches or, or sees it. I just need to share it. And mm. I've got a lot of insight that I think can be very transformative for other advisors. So why not use that? I think you we've spoken briefly about, no, do, do you do you actually go back into financial advice proper in terms of licensed and start a business and all of those kind of things? Like, where where's your thinking at in that world at the moment? Um, part of what I'm doing is sitting my head up again. You know, I went from working 85 hours a week and managing a family and doing pretty well at that to you know working 30 hours a week, um, and that was a difficult transformation in itself. Um, and now I think I'm ready to try a few more entrepreneurial things. I don't know yet, James, but watch this space is what I'll say. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a few things in the works. Let's just put it that way. Fair enough. Yeah. And I was interested to pick your brain. Like, obviously, you're working with a lot of um, you know, well-established businesses and you know, helping with transformation of pricing and a whole range of different things. Uh if you if you were starting from scratch, like you know, there's there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast and they kind of have this itch to, you know, do I do it my own thing? I'm not terribly happy where I am, or I want to do things differently. I'm not getting the capacity to, and you know, there's there's been numerous guests that have that have all spoken about those kind of things. If you were starting afresh tomorrow, what where would you start? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I kind of just want to add, as I always do, I never give straight answers at the start. I give context. 
Um, so I, I probably do half a day a week, which is not business related, right? And I believe businesses should be for profit. But that if you're a profitable business owner, then you need to find other ways to give back, but you treat them as separate things. Um, so I do at least half a day a week of mentoring that isn't paid. Um, mm. I'm very selective with it. So it's got to be people that are willing to you know, take on board very direct and very blunt input and do Oof. something with it. Um, and most of that is people that are thinking about or just crossing into starting their own businesses or whatever. Um, in in the financial advice space, primarily, yeah. Um, whilst I've got experience in lots of businesses, financial advice is my you know my home. It's my it's the thing I know the most. I know it back to front. Um, so I've been through that. I've started I've started so many advice style businesses from scratch. I'd build them up, sell them, or just shut them down and restart them. So I've been through that process myself. Yes. And I've helped a lot of people make that transition. So that's my context to answer the question. I would say that the biggest issue is you. It's your headspace. And I'm going to give you an example. So I've got uh, I've got a new a new client. He's been in business for not not very long, like a number of years, but pretty early on. I made the transition, done pretty well in the first couple of years, but has really been stagnating um, and it encountered a whole, you know, a whole bunch of sticking points. And in looking at where he's at, it's pretty simple. He had developed an attachment to the outcome, right? So he's going into prospective client meetings, he's meeting opportunities, and he's developed for a range of reasons an attachment to the outcome. Boom. So there's no point me giving him a new system, a process, a script, or whatever. What we've actually got to address is the behavioral issue first. And I would say there are no such things as business problems. There's only people problems. So if you're going into business, but you are bringing the wrong hangups, then you can really hamstring yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you're in business and you're stuck, it's got nothing to do with the software you're using or whether you buy leads from somewhere else. It's mm -hmm. because you have a limitation. It's because you have a perspective, a perspective gap. Um, I'll give you another example. A guy that I was just meeting with and jumped off to get in this call. I won't mention him by name, but I definitely know he's going to watch this this podcast. Um, and you know, doing incredibly well. Been an advisor for a long time. Um, you know, build building up his reputation, getting a lot of opportunities with clients, but then a lot of them not not converting, like right. not actually coming on board. Um, and, you know, delving into that, it's like, well, again, he's also developed an attachment to the outcome, but from a completely different personal perspective. Not only that, this is someone who takes longer to get to know people, right? You have different personality styles, you have different belief patterns. Um, and so what we had to work through is him being more of himself, allowing deeper, longer meetings to begin with before pitching a value up a value offer. Yes. And so making the change for the personality, but also working on why is there an attachment to an outcome and removing the impetus for that, as well as dealing with the personal history. And in that case, well, let's just say the numbers went up very significant. So I know this isn't a simple answer. I don't tend to give simple answers. I you know don't. you know that, James. We've we've worked <laughs> together for for a, for a long enough time now. So what I would say if you're starting out, you need to look in the mirror. Why? Why am I doing it? What do I want to accomplish? What risk am I willing to take? What work am I willing to do? And what does it actually take to be successful in building a business? You need to answer those questions and you need to answer them honestly. And then you also need to look in the mirror and say, well, do I have some limiting beliefs around this? You know, what, am, I, am I in my own way? Do I have a track record of being able to you know, grow networks, to find people, to build relationships, to create opportunities. And I see a lot of guys that go from, you know, they've been an employee that try to start a business, but they haven't done any of the groundwork for becoming someone capable of attracting clients. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden you jump out and, and no one follows you or no one's no one's calling and and, yeah, and or, or you get the opportunities and you're friend zone yourself. You know, you do the friends and family, maybe you've got a network, but you don't know how to have that conversation and you end up friend, friend zoning yourself. Yeah. Um, and if I look at your career, James, you've done it internally. So 
you know, we talked about this many years ago as the pathway forward, you know, for you in you as an employee moving into because you were an employee at the very start, right? Mm-hmm. By the way, you're still one of the I think one of two people who did my programs and paid for them out of their salary. So yeah. there's something in that. Uh, and it's one of the things that I would say to advisors, do you actually get advice? All right? yeah. So if you are starting your own business, have you got mentors? Are you Truth. getting advice? And are you putting aside a budget to pay for advice? Because if you're not, you don't actually believe in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Well, you think, you think, I don't pay people for advice? I bloody do. I just got an email that was giving me a little bit of a nudge from one of my advisors as <laughs> well, right? <laughs> yeah. So you need to be aware. You need to ask questions. You need to look at yourself and you need to make sure that you're prepared. And if you've already gone out and started your business and you're having sticking points, then it's not the process that's the problem if it's not working. Mm. I remember you saying to me uh, like, a while back and it stuck with me ever since like this this kind of hang up on the outcome these couple of you know example clients that you're referring to getting stuck on the outcome and and you in one forum or another I remember you saying you know what what difference to my life and and rightly so as an employee what difference does my life is it going to make to my life if this person agrees to pay me five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars for my for my advice. So I'm still going to be paid the same salary. There might be some type of bonus structure, yes, but the difference to my life is minuscule. But if you really believe in what you're doing and and the way that you can actually help these people and change their lives, the benefits for them, even though they're paying you five or ten or twenty thousand dollars for it, the difference to my life is insignificant. So whether this person says yes or no, it's not going to make any difference to my life. It's going to make a whole lot of difference to their life, but nothing towards my life. And that that stuck with me forever uh, and I have it ever since and I've explained that to a number of people here in the office and you kind of overcome that when you go into those interactions where you say look it doesn't really make any difference to me whether you say yes or no then then the kind of those walls come down and you actually find more people end up saying yes to you than, yeah. than no surprisingly yeah. um that's absolutely but, the case but everyone lots of people get stuck on it um James yes I have said that um, I think it was 2017. I can remember it. <laughs> I remember so you, I re- it was 2017. I can never remember where it was and you're sitting there and I could see the light bulb coming on. So yeah, I really enjoyed you saying that back. Look, I'm, I'm going to kind of add to that, right? Um, advisors don't really, in my opinion, and I've worked with a lot of them and some very successful people, they still don't understand their value in almost, in- no, I'm going to say in every single case. And I've spoken to thousands of them on a one-on-one basis not just eh, forget being at you know mdrt and there's a few thousand people or whatever it is right i mean one-on-one yeah and universally there is some misconception or some roadblock about the value of their advice and this these are self-perpetuating things and the problem with that is that if you don't recognize and own your own value you can't expect a client to do it. Hmm. And so you become more valuable by changing your frame of reference than your body language changes, your tonality, your sentence syntax, everything, because your intent changed. And so that's an example of one of the, the little tools that I use to help people realign their intent. So in other words, should you have a business plan? If you're, you're growing a business, right? I need to have... X amount of clients, I need X amount of new people a week, Um, I need to be charging X amount of dollars. Should you have that? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't have a plan, it's like not having a financial plan. Are you freaking insane? By the same token, when you go into a meeting with a client, you can't carry that intent with you. You can have that intent for your business planning, but when you go into a meeting with a client, you have to be completely in your best frame of reference and your intent has to be i am free of encumbrance to give the best value to this person and your best value comes with caveats your best value comes with expectations and it comes with a price tag and if you can't hold that and deliver it it means that you're not free to have an interventional conversation you're not free to set the client straight on the bs that they're using and what they're doing And I think advisors hold themselves back. So they end up creating a financial plan 
when they could have actually changed this person's life. Boom. And that's what makes you truly valuable. By the way, how much can you charge for people when you change their life? Well, you know, let's just say that I'm not cheap when I work with someone, but they're going to get a life-changing experience. Yeah. And they're going to pass yeah. that on to their clients at the same time. So, I guess that's the other bit that I would say to answer your question if I was starting out, I would go into this with uh not going into a meeting trying to get an outcome. Go into a meeting owning your value and being direct and remembering that the value to their life is massive if they say yes and the value to your life is minuscule even if you've got no clients. It's still mm. a drop in the ocean of your life experience. So be present, own your value and the guys that start their businesses from that build very quickly. It's interesting. Your, your reference of expectations there kind of triggered another memory of, of something in the interactions with you over the years around around setting those expectations. And like I now, even in the even in the very first fifteen minute kind of introductory phone call that I'm having with a client, we're talking about oh this, what about what do they want? What do they need help with? Where are they stuck? That kind of stuff. And then we then we kind of get into the the process. And and then there's every single person I say. We have an expectation with our clients that if there's something going on in your life, I want you to tell me now. Don't wait until our next scheduled meeting that's four months' time. If there's something we need to deal with now, I'll deal with it now. And so, you know, it's only kind of so it's happened subconsciously now. But you you put the, you put it in my head in the first place. This idea of making sure you're setting those expectations with the clients because it's not you're not just you know you're not just an order taker from them. You, you need to be partnered with them as well. So, to continue answering your question, because I think it's a good one, a very good one, right. and it works universally because it's a reminder for those guys that have been running their businesses for 15 years just as much as for the new ones. It's your business. You need to figure out what terms you operate on. And the other thing that I would see is advisors are crap at understanding where their line is and what they expect from people, and they don't explicitly articulate it. And- you know, I've I've obviously got my own. I've I've been using this psychology and understanding of this for a long time. By the way, it's not manipulation. It's actually being very authentic. It's exactly how you should be. And advisors are far too implicit and not explicit enough. They're not explicit enough with their value. They're not explicit enough with their expectations of clients. They're not explicit enough about the fee and why people should pay it and that they are worth it and you know being able to look them in the eye as they do that um and these are all things that have a dramatic impact not just on the profitability of their business but more importantly the value to the client because they behave differently when you bring a different psychology to the experience they act differently they take you more seriously um and these things are very important um so expectations are a major one well it's your business what are your terms like what do you require for a relationship to be a good one for you. Too many people talk about the, well, this is the value I bring to you. And, you know, and by the way, they don't really articulate that in emotional context, but that's a whole other conversation. This is the value and here's the fee to do it. Well, where's the, this is what I want my business to be. This is the reason I do it. This is the thing that I seek out of this. This is what I bring to the table. And I'm not trying to do it for everyone. It's okay if it's not for you. But if you want that, Here's the deal. This is how you need to behave. This is what our relationship needs to look like. And when you articulate it in this way, the perception of value is vastly different, but it's mm. also authentic. So if I was starting out from scratch, I'd want to know what that is, and I'd want to be upfront with people right from the get-go, and I'd be really direct on setting my expectations. And the normal psychology is to do the opposite. I've got no clients. Holy crap. Yeah. Take everything. I need to take, you know, the old shock, the proverbial shotgun approach, take everything, and then you end up creating crap relationships with low margin um, when you could have been creating probably more yeses, as you know, right? More yeses at higher value with a lot more respect and therefore a lot more behavioral change on the client's behalf. So that's, mm. I guess that's the summary of the answer for you. And if you're, you've been in business for a number of years and you're like, why am I stuck? Why am I not going further? There's a reason, right? You're doing some things wrong. And so you need to look in the mirror to figure out what those things are. And guess what? It's impossible to be objective about your own business 
your own financial situation, and your relationships. All of these things you are too emotionally tied to, so it's impossible to be objective about them, which is why everyone needs advice. And if you are Mm. not getting advice so that you can be objective, then you don't believe in what you're doing, and therefore you're in this circular reference, right? (laughs) So, So find ways to be held accountable to get objective input into what you're doing. That would be my best advice. And if you can't hmm. afford it, figure out how to get it anyway. Interesting that when I put put a question like that to you about where would you start if you're starting, and and uh, and I kind of uh, had a sense of of where you would take that. You put that to other people. It's like make sure you've got a great website, and you then you inst- you've got the Instagram handle, and you've got this, and you've got that, and you've got the other thing. Yeah. Um, without you need the website, but I think you, you know you'd need to spend a whole lot more time than what most people do on exactly what you've just articulated. Look, this is the stuff that makes or breaks you. Whether you've got a website or a good LinkedIn profile or whatever, they are nice to haves and will make certain things easier, absolutely. But I promise you, I've seen I've seen so many people nail all of that and not the other and it will fail every time. Yeah. Yep. Um, so definitely makes a difference. You know, it's kind of interesting because I sold my you know, sold my financial planning business like 14 years ago. So I've been off the tools, but uh, it's funny because I still spend my time telling advisors how to structure this stuff with clients. So it's not, I haven't exactly been off the tools and I'm still, <laughs> I'm still pretty good at that. Uh, we're, yeah. we're dealing with a very tricky capital gains tax um, situation at the moment. So that was an interesting one too. But, um, you know, sold the business. Social media is what I wanted to focus on because advisors weren't using well, not just social media, but technology and communication and digital leverage and building brands and attracting clients. And I had so many people come to events and workshops and, you know, watch the content and very few of them did anything with it. Mm. And the reason they didn't wasn't because it doesn't work every single time. It does. The reason they didn't do it is because their foundational business model had issues. Yeah, right. They weren't owning their value they weren't charging appropriately. They were leaving too much change and value on the table for clients. They were giving the, the bits that they were doing, which were the most valuable, they're giving away for free, but only doing it half assed because they weren't getting paid for. Um, and they had no capacity and they were living in this box that had largely been created through, you know, the regulators and the licensees and the profession itself. And you can't see. You know, how do you explain to the goldfish that it lives in water, right? You can't see what you can't see. Um, and so it does take objectivity. And that's been part of my journey, figuring out which bits to do at what point in time. So my yeah. answer is absolutely the most important thing is controlling your intent and being honest with yourself about what it is that you want, what you're prepared to do. And you better bloody be able to go into a client meeting saying, this is who I am. This is why I'm running. This is why I did this thing. This is the value I seek to bring to the table. This is a difference I want to make for clients. It's okay if it's not for you. I'm not trying to do it for everyone. But if you want that kind of relationship, this is what you have to do for me in order for me to be willing. And if you can do that, it changes your intent. It also changes the intent of the relationship. And it will make you exponentially more valuable right at the start. Thank you, Baz. Thank you for joining me today. We could talk, and said we could do a whole Joe Rogan and talk for uh, for a half a day, but we both probably have things to to get to for the rest of the day, and maybe we'll do a, a, a recap podcast in a little while. Be good to have you, James. Uh, good to I have am you more back than happy. At some point, I'm more than happy to delve into any of these topics in more detail. Obviously, I've got like literally sixty different workshop modules that I'm not doing anything with. So happy to share any of that with you, and it's been a pleasure working with you over the years, mate. Um, as 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 someone who has been an advisor to you, you are incredibly coachable, um, and you're just a hell of a good guy. So thanks, bud. Thanks, Bass. Thanks for joining me. Pleasure. If anyone wants to reach out, LinkedIn's probably the place. Yeah, to LinkedIn's find you. LinkedIn's the way to go. If you got yeah. a question, I, there's this magic thing you can do, which is shoot me an invite to connect and ask me a question. And I'll answer it. It's pretty straightforward. (laughs) Pretty sounds pretty simple to me. Thanks, Baz. We'll have you on again for sure. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care. Cheers.